In the 18th century, keeping food viable was a difficult task. Uh, the only way to really preserve meat, pork, beef, or fish was to pack that in salt. Uh, so here at Mount Vernon, Washington built a salt house in which he stored his salt, uh, not to pack fish or meat here, but this is a depository to really keep that valuable commodity, the salt, safe and sound until it's needed. So the question then becomes, where does George Washington procure salt? Is it available here in the Chesapeake region? You think of the brackish water, the Potomac River, the Chesapeake Bay. Well, that's really not going to do what he needs in the purpose of, of curing meat or fish. So Washington did import salt. And the salt that he liked the best and thought was the highest quality came from Lisbon. He refers to it in letters as Lisbon salt. Sometimes other uh, businessmen or merchants would try to sell Washington salt from Liverpool. Other sources in the Caribbean were also available, but he felt them inferior for what he needed here at Mount Vernon. Down along his fisheries, along Union Farm, Washington had an actual fish house. And when the active fishing was going on, the records indicate that the fish were brought there to that location where the coopers were at work making fish barrels, and this fish was then gutted, the heads cut off, and it was packed with salt. It takes about 55 pints of salt per barrel to pack it, so you certainly needed a lot considering that George Washington would harvest over a million fish every spring. Again, this is a valuable commodity to George Washington really for three reasons. Number one, it's used as rations for the enslaved people here at Mount Vernon, and also some of the artisans that worked here and his own family. Secondly, here's a portion of this salted fish that he's going to sell at market here locally and bring an in income. And the records also indicate that, that sometimes he shipped salted fish in barrels down to the West Indies. So in the early years of Mount Vernon, uh, fisheries really took off and it, throughout his life remained one of his key income sources. So there's two basic methods used here at Mount Vernon to uh, cure food with salt. It could be beef, pork, or of course fish with the fisheries. One is dry packing, and that's what we know was done with the fish most times. Um, in the case of hams or meats, uh, pork, oftentimes they would have a salt brine solution, which is water and salt, to which they'd soak that meat in for a period of time in order for it to absorb all that salted water, and then that would go ahead and cure it, keep it preserved. In the wintertime, you must remember that the gardens aren't flourishing. They often refer to winter as the starving time, and so they're eating a lot of pickled uh, pickled things and uh, you know that preserved meat and the dried fish you get to springtime again the weather warms up the gardens are flourishing and the rest of their food is in full bloom so the winter months in the 18th century were more difficult and uh, as everything was so this cured meat was critical to make it through winter uh, and for the Washingtons that's why salt was such an important thing